Hi, welcome to Vintage Base Camp. Today we have a 1970s Overlander going out of the shop. We've done a lot of little things over a month. Dave and Jay have worked on it quite extensively. We've done everything from subfloor to refinishing the bathroom to exterior lights to axles, floor, subfloor, electrical, plumbing. So I'm going to go over a few of those things with you guys and you'll see some stills and some other uh, shots of it. But we'll start with the outside. I'll kind of walk you through. Hi. My name is Greg Pinner. I'm the owner of Vintage Base Camp. Today we're going to be working on a dent on a 1970 Overlander Airstream. Now the dent on the rear of the end cap up there has been pushed out a little bit. Uh, we have access to it by the interior closet, little pantry. We removed the back side of that. We're able to push it a little bit. Dave and Jay are going to be working on kind of smoothing it out. Dave being our metal expert here. And uh, Jay's going to be helping him. James is going to be behind the camera. And, um, you know, so hopefully this will help anybody out there wondering about the dents. You can either pull them, you can work them a little bit, but when they're in place, it's a little bit easier if you have access to both sides. It's very um, expensive to go ahead and replace those end cap pieces. So hopefully this is a decent solution to uh, this issue. So um, I'll let uh, James be filming while, uh, while they work. So hopefully you enjoy it. Thanks. If, this, if that's too big, you can use that. Okay. Cool. Um, it's just if they drop, we might lose it. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, I think it'll fall right yes, through that yes. fiberglass. Yeah. Not, we can poke it down in there. All right, I guess we're, we're ready. ready. Okay, cool. Okay. I picked the right guy for in here with my uh, monkey arms. Oh. Basically what's done here is a hammer and dolly method. Uh, use the dolly as a backing block to, to hammer down the creases and you use force to push up the dents. Uh, and then it takes two men to do that in this type of application. Uh, once you're able to hammer and dolly it, uh, it'll hold its position. So Dave and uh, Jay hammered and dollied out the, the dent. The, um, you know, this isn't the technique for every uh, Airstream via polished, unpolished, but it was the best approach for something that we were able to have a little access to and be able to kind of make it an overall improvement. Now, this trailer has many other dents all over it, so a purist might have take issue with it, but this overall gets the, uh, the dent out cosmetically. And uh, so, we're on the Overlander project, and Dave has been working on a mount for the uh, converter and the distribution panel breaker box. Uh, so we've got to kind of work with existing uh, fixtures in the camper. So what we came up with is a nice little panel here. It'll go above the water heater and then when the owner reinstalls everything, they, they're able to cut this uh, window a little bit shorter, slide this panel in. It will then uh, be on the interior of the closet right here because this is a hanging closet. They don't really ever have to mess with the distribution panel. Uh, and they're able to reinstall all the cabinetry when we return the camper back to them. So it's a kind of an easy fix. Uh, we had to move all of the low voltage over. Battery's gonna go back where it was. We checked the continuity, chased all the different wires down, labeled them, so then when we put them in the, with the new updated breaker box, 12 volt breaker box, they'll all be uh, wired correctly. The owner can then re, you know, reattach the fixtures and uh, they'll be ready to go.
control panel unfortunately was so burnt up uh, that we do have some leads going to it so in the future they wanted to do something up there they would at least have power to it uh, and a fuse so that panel unfortunately is dead and that happens a lot so we moved all the electrical and everything to the back of the trailer uh, we did have to replace some of the switches uh, we didn't have to do much subfloor up here just around the door which is pretty typical all the windows, the thumb latches, uh, the screens were redone, uh, the little bug felt was redone. So there's a lot of little things that we had to do this trailer. Even the screens up here, uh, fan still works. Here's the antenna, the interior of the antenna. These lights work. Uh, they're you know kind of antiquated in the sense that they're very neat. They're three-way, so you could you know they got a three-way setting. You can either do two bulbs, one bulb, three bulbs, but they don't always work. So the after bench testing the old furnace and realizing it was not very efficient and not working, we went ahead and replaced this furnace with the uh, Suburban. I believe it's the 30, and it's very efficient. It almost. Uh, mocks up or fits into the, where the original uh, furnace went. We did have to make like a little distribution box. We lined it with uh, insulation and we were able to use most of the original ductwork until we got to the bathroom where we had to rework stuff because the gray water pipes got in the way. Uh, but again, the flooring runs all the way underneath of it. If the owner wants to cut this away to get to all the new shutoffs and plumbing, they're able to. We replaced the new uh, city fill. This is something that I like to put in. It's for winterizing. Uh, it's a straight valve that you can just pull out and put it into your winterization and the water pump will pull it all the way through. So some of the things we had to do back here is we put in the new subfloor. The frame was in really good shape for this period. Usually we have to do a lot of framework, but Airstreams had a significant flaw in the design. They had a opening back here so it structurally, it weakened a lot of things that were happening, uh, but you, they did it because so you could access the valves and the dump valves and other things like that, shutoffs. But what we did is we raised everything above uh, the floor grade, and you can see here we have all our shutoffs. We use PEX, um, new battery, battery mount, and this is solid floor underneath here that really goes in and ties well into the, uh, the actual channel of the frame. Uh, we redid all the gaskets, the exterior lights, you'll see, we'll focus on those. So what we did here is we notched out the bumper. It has a grade, uh, it's not the dramatic grade that some of you guys are used to, but it does drain very well. Uh, the gray water comes in from over here because our gray water tanks that we put in are actually in the belly pan. It has a clean out here with the valve. Uh, it has your gray water valve and your regular black water valve, so everything's able to cl uh, flush itself out. And uh, work properly as it should in a very kind of contemporary uh, trailer build. So what we did here on the exterior, some of the features, we did replace the axles. Uh, we did go with a 32.5 degree downward with these Dexter axles and these have easy lube uh, bearings, but that gives us a little bit more height. Uh, for traveling and uh, overall these trailers sit really low so that gives us a little bit more height uh, to work with uh, when traveling and going over curbs and lows and highs in the road. Uh, this person has some radials. I personally like a uh, D-rated uh, trailer tire bias. When these explode they tend to explode out. The trailer tire goes like this because it comes uh, unraveled. The other things we did on it, uh, we redid the gasket here, screen, put in a new heater, uh, new water, city water fill. Um, up the top, you can see we put a new AC on and a digital antenna. And again, there'll be stills of that that you'll be able to see. I'm going to talk a little bit about the seven-way pigtail that we had to replace on the uh, electrical. We just updated this cable and replaced this with an exterior kind of seven-way prong. The original, they are outdated, they are obsolete, they don't make them anymore. 
So this owner is gonna do a lot of the work themselves. We were just doing all the structural work. We've tested the lines. This is my tank, my test tank. We've tested, pressure tested all the gas lines. We were able to use a lot of the existing and then run a few new ones. All right, let's move on. These lights up here, these are these LED uh, from Vintage Trailer Supply. Again, um, nice. You don't have to do a lot of uh, uh, rewiring as far as uh, on the ones you get on Amazon and stuff. They come with a positive negative, so you've got to ground that wire. You've got a lot of extra wires you have to stuff in. So with these, there's just a single wire like the originals were, and it grounds off the actual frame of the trailer. All right. Part of the updating that we did was actual the city service. So we updated to a lock round 30 amp plug. Uh, the original ones, they had a plug that actually was wired straight into the uh, actual breaker box. So we kind of updated all that. We updated the city water fill, something simple, put in a new water heater. It's been tested as a dual fuel electric and gas. The windows, you can see that we rebuilt a lot of those, or all of them, excuse me, new uh, weather stripping, uh, arms, and latches, thumb latches. This is the city hookup for the coax. Um, a lot of the antennas that came with were the aluminum, so we updated it with a new digital antenna and chased all the wires so it's ready to go. The product we've used in this trailer is Infinity Flooring. It's a flooring system that is a sheet kind of vinyl. It's a woven vinyl. It's a luxurious vinyl. It's very water resistant. It's a marine based product. And they're actually using this in some of the late model Airstreams like the Tommy Bahama and several other models. Uh, it's very durable. Um, people are like, well, what about pet hair? It's very pet friendly, very stain friendly. Um, you just kind of mop it out. There's different ways you can do it. You can get a binding around it and snap it down. We glue ours down um, and it's a full sheet. We like to run it underneath all the furniture uh, so you have a constant flooring system. So with any trailer that's 40 plus years old, there was a significant amount of rot back here. So we redid all the subfloor um, in the bathroom. Thus, we pulled out the bathroom and had it refinished. We rebuilt the closet here and the doors uh, so that we could fit the control panel in here that has the tank monitor and the water pump, the Atwood control system for the water heater, and then a little voltage regulator that tells us what we're drawing. So it's a nice little feature, it's inexpensive, uh, and it tends to work very well. The, the converter down here is just a regular Webco 30 amp uh, system. And what the owner is gonna have to do is they'll have to, this panel right here, they'll have to cut a window in it and kind of slide it in and uh, be able to kind of adhere it to this piece, thus making the closet wall finished. Uh, with this, we lost one shelf because we ended up putting the electrical in here. The power was over here with an, uh, a univolt. So we made this system over here a common ground and then ran all those wires after we checked continuity and were able to label them all over to this side of the trailer making all the electrical in one spot. The uh, bathroom was refinished. We put in a new toilet. Uh, again, as you saw, the flooring system runs underneath the uh, entire bathroom. All the hardware and little fixtures in the bathroom were polished by our polisher, James. We did put on new fixtures, um, new little hatch here, but all the little things that you see were polished, new doors interior closet refinished, bathtub refinished, and then we had to change a lot of the ductwork uh, because of the, again, the ABS that goes into the gray water. We did end up putting a new AC on with a new air distribution box. So there was a lot of little things that we had to do to this trailer uh, to get it functional. The owners, Debbie and Terry, picked this trailer up for a good price and um, they're able to sink uh, a good amount of money into it and they're going to have a really nice trailer because the skin is in good shape uh, the floor is in good shape it didn't have a lot of rodent damage uh, so they'll have a nice camper a good size camper to travel in now that everything's up to date 
So if you like what you see, you can visit our website, you can follow us on Facebook, reach out to us, we're happy to answer questions. Thanks for visiting Vintage Base Camp.